So uh, I'm glad to see you here. I'm glad to see that, you're in, that you got your good, your good face on and that you're thinking good and you're feeling good concerning this situation that we got going on. Say amen to that. Nobody ever thought that we would find ourselves, the whole world, talking about the whole world now, we're all facing the same exact thing. Everybody's in trouble. Glory be to God. Nobody can claim, but we all over. Everybody's in trouble. Say amen to that. This thing has reached the four corners of the globe. This is really Star Trek for real. <laughs> Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> but we are glad to know that God is able. Say amen to that. And I'm glad, like I said, to say, I'm glad to see that you're here and that God is blessing you and keeping you and that the anointing of the Holy Spirit is on your life. Say amen to that. Amen. And God is going to use you in this season like you never thought possible. Yes. Your light is going to shine. I don't care how much you try to darken it. Yes. Say amen to that. Amen. I'm not going to let you get scared and stay home even though that's what you want to do. Right. Say amen to that. So you're going to be used by God mightily through you at your job, where you frequent places where you go. People are going to see the light of Christ in you and they're going to, be, they're going to come to you and inquire, how is it that you can remain so calm with what we're dealing with? Don't you rob God of his glory now. You don't, you're not that smart. The only thing you need to tell him, say, all I know is that Jesus is alive and he lives in me. Something along those lines. You want to always give God the glory. And, and then the next thing you tell them, say, if you would let me, if you would approve and let me, I would like to pray the peace of Christ over your mind right now so that he can calm you down. And so you can still do what you need to do. Will you allow me to do that? Oh, please, yes. When they say, oh, please, yes, that's a candidate for salvation right there. Get a Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a great revival to come out of this, for people to come to know the Lord and those who have left to come back running. I'm tired of getting whipped. Amen? Put your hands together. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Well, we, this morning we were talking. My message is from here on in until we get out of this is encouragement and preparedness. To encourage you and prep you. Say amen to that. You thought you were just coming to church for a place to hang out. You didn't know you were getting ready to do battle with the devil. Say amen to that. Glory be to God. Well, it is now your time to shine. But before I do that, let me take a moment. Since he told me this morning personally, Rodney, where are you? Rodney Reese, stand up. Today is Rodney's birthday. Everybody give Rodney a big round of applause. Today is Rodney's birthday. He is 10. Is it 10? He is the big 10 today. He, he is 10 years old today. So everybody on the count of three, I'm sure the internet people are watching say the man must be crazy. Since you took the time to tell me today was your birthday and then your baby brother followed you up and said, you know today around his birthday. <laughs> so that means you either want some money out of me or you want some recognition. I, I know your baby brother don't want any money, so he wants you to be recognized. So everybody on the count of three, let's sing happy birthday to Rodney. One, two, three, sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, little Rodney. Happy birthday to you. Come on, let's give him a big round of applause. Amen, amen, amen. Give him glory. Thank you so much for letting me know that. Amen. That little guy that comes with y'all in the white shirt right there, didn't he give his life to the Lord, was it a couple months ago? What's his name? Come here, Christian. Y'all can tell his mama this when y'all get home. Come here, Christian. He walked in this morning. He reminds me, he, he has a, he carries himself like somebody special. He, he, he just walks like he walks upright. He doesn't do that thing, all of that. But when he walked in, he, 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 gave, me, he gave me some dap and he said, hey, Pastor, how you doing? And as he was walking away, I saw a light on him. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a light on him that the presence of God is on him. And I, I don't know what it is, but God is going to, and we're instrumental in making this light become a reality in his life. To tell that boy's mama that I said, she just don't know who God gave her the birth into this world. Thank you so much, man. See you later. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen.
that, that boy could very well be our replacement, Denoise. Except he'll be doing it in a shirt and skinny tight jeans, which is all right with me. Say amen to that. Because he wear them really well. Get a Lord a hand clap of praise, man. Y'all trying to stay in the dumps. I ain't going to let you. All right, now, now we, we've been, we've been uh, like I said, uh, all I believe God has impressed upon my heart to encourage and instruct us as we travel through this time and space. Your assignment is not going to change. Tell me that. Not going to change. Your assignment is not going to change, nor can you beg God to put it on hold till this thing go away. Say amen to that. Yeah. That God does not, is not going to stop doing anything. And this is not the only thing we're dealing with. Folk are dealing with everything all over the world. If it ain't this, it's something else in this. And then it's something else with that and this. And it's always something. Family this, money this, all kind of crisis. This just seems to be the one, right, that has taken center stage because it affects the whole world. Say amen to that. And actually, this is so, so now, you know, like we, we go to the grocery store and you, you can't find hand sanitizer. Matter of fact, y'all want to, might want to talk with Sister Jacqueline Hubs. She has a good home remedy on how to make hand sanitizer. She'll tell you how to make it. So you, and if you got the right tools, you can make it till your face fall off. <laughs> Say amen to that. Glory be to God. But anyway, so we, we've been, we, we're going to encourage, we're going to instruct and pray as, we, as God takes us through this time of, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to say cleansing, say cleansing, amen? amen? Now, God is not the orchestrator of this germ, no. say amen to that. And this germ comes straight out of the pit of hell, it's the devil doing it, and he's trying to create a distraction, especially the strategic timing of it. It's almost remarkable because it's just about the time where we want to recognize and celebrate the resurrection or the Passover. Say amen to that. And so he's trying to get our focus off the Passover, scatter us all to the four winds so there will be no celebration. I wonder what is going to happen with this Passover celebration that's so significant. See, that, that's how I'm learning to look at things. I'm looking at things now strictly from God's perspective. Why now? Why, at this, why so close to celebrating the resurrection? Say amen to that. So there must be, so, so something gonna, is going to take place that is really going to shake the entire world. But God's not going to, he's still going to do it, say amen to that, and knock this virus out of its place in the process. Amen. Now, so what we're going to do with, this morning, again, more encouragement to, from the word of God on how we're supposed to respond in the times that we're living in. And the Bible tells us there's, ecclesiastically, specifically says, there's nothing new under the sun. Well, the last time I checked, we're still under the same sun that Joshua was under, say amen to that, same sun that Jesus was under, so there's nothing new. So if, if the Bible, if Ecclesiastes says there's nothing new under the sun, that means something like this has either happened before and God dealt with it because there's nothing new under the sun. Say amen. This is not the first time something has come on the scene that there was no cure for and God has blessed us to find a cure. I remember back in the early days of my childhood, my brother died of polio on the brain. He died in less than 24 hours. Yeah, less than 24 hours. Nobody had even heard of being a polio. But he contracted polio, and it settled in his brain. And the doctor said, had he lived, he'd been in a vegetative state. So he died in 24 hours. After his funeral, I contracted it in my legs. Yeah. And so they quarantined our whole family. They came and picked us up. I thought we were special. They came and picked us up. <laughs> they came and picked us up and took us to the place to get the little cube, sugar cube thing. With the, the vaccine on it? Yeah, they, were, they came and got us personally. This was in the 50s, man, when it was really rough, man. And it wasn't y'all that came and picked me up. <clears throat> y'all were scared. They came down in my neighborhood, picked me up in an emergency, picked all of us, my mom, my, all my sisters and brothers, and my grandma and my auntie, picked all of us up, drove us to the place they was giving out the vaccine, Moved us to the front of the line. I've been special my whole life, I'm telling you. Put us to the front of the line, got us back in the car, took us all back home. And one time they was bringing us food. Boom! And y'all wasn't bringing the food. I've been special my whole life. But anyway, I contracted polio in my legs. My mom, I was, guess I was too young. But mom said, but it didn't take. So God's been trying to do stuff to me for a long time. Say amen to that. But anyway, so we see that this is not the first time that something like this has happened, won't be the last time, but we have to learn, we, we must lean and depend on what we know from Scripture and respond to these things according to the Word of God as we are led by the Spirit of God. Can you say amen to that? Amen. If you understand that, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Now, so 
Again, this virus, if nothing else, it shows us just how vulnerable we are and just how frail we are. You know, man, man, anytime you can't protect, it's, it's really something that God will give us bodies that are just as fragile. Say amen to that. We can't even protect ourselves from catching the cold. Okay, how much you sanitize your hand at the right instance, the, germ, the one germ gets in there and all this kind of stuff. So we are very frail. God built us like that because his desire for us is to totally and completely depend on him. He doesn't want us using our mindset for anything but the recognizing him and depending on him for his ability to take care of us no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation. Can you agree with that? Well, clap your hands. I'm trying to keep you all alive. Don't go to sleep on me. Say amen to that. Now, so, so in doing that, we have to understand we are very vulnerable. I, one, thing, one thing I do find fascinating about this virus, I don't like it, but I find it fascinating. For the first time, it proves that other than looking a little bit different, we're all built the same on the inside. Yeah. Say amen to that. So when that virus comes, if he comes down the line, they don't say, well, you're a woman, I'll skip you, I'm going to get the guys. No, it's like, oh, you know what? All y'all look the same inside, so I'm just going to get in there and wreak havoc on the inside. Say amen to that. So this thing has crossed racial barriers. It's, it, it crossed cultural barriers. It has crossed denominational barriers. It has crossed religious barriers. Whether you believe in God or not, it's knocking on your door. Say amen to that. It doesn't matter. So for the first time, all of mankind, uh, other, it's, it, uh, other times it was like the plague and chicken pox and, and uh, uh, rheumatic fever, tuberculosis, right? But now this time, this thing has systematically affected every person on the globe. Mm. Wow. Ireland canceled St. Patrick's Day celebration. Ireland. Ireland, where it came from, cancel it. The Olympics, trying to hold it open, but they're talking about canceling. The NBA season, gone. We don't know if baseball is going to happen. College, college, the NCAA, cancel. You know how much money that is? March Madness is March gone. Say me that. All gone. All gone. The Bucks just signed Tom Brady. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> Say amen to that. So all kinds of things are happening in the wake of this virus. But it proves again just how fragile we are. There are people, all airline travel is restricted. No European flights, no Asian flights, no African flights, no, no uh, Istanbul, all of that. You cannot leave America and go to any foreign country. And some of the domestic flights have been dropped down to less than 50%. So that means if you do get a flight, chances are you're going to be packed on a plane so tight. And a lot of people are not flying because inside an airplane, you can't get that 10 feet social distance thing working. So people are not flying. Can't take a trip in your car. You don't ever know. You may run up on a gas station. It's closed. You see? So, so the idea of this thing is to put people in such a state of mind that they stop doing everything that they were doing and go home and live in fear. And go home and live in fear. That's why you can't pay too much attention to the TV and read too much into it. Say amen to that. Our job right now as believers is to be the light for the world to see how to navigate this thing. Say amen to that. And when we come out of it, God will get the glory. Amen? amen. So let's look in the scriptures. I know my media team asked me, Pastor, you didn't, you didn't send us anything for a, a subject. I say, I didn't give you one, so you guys are going to have to wing it. <laughs> say amen to that. Amen. Now, so, so since this is not new and since things like this has happened, and since, uh, uh, like the Bible says, there's nothing new on the sun. What, what can we get? This morning I talked about uh, maintaining your faith in these times. And we do, went to the book of Joshua and we talked about keeping your faith strong. And, and when your faith is strong, make sure you speak what the word of God says and you obey the word of God and you stay out of fear. Say stay out of fear. But I want to caution too. One other thing you want to say that of, as a child of God, you don't want to live a life of rebellion in the times we're in right now. You don't want to live a life of rebellion. You don't want to be in rebellion because if you're in rebellion, you neutralize the protection that God can give you. Not that he won't, but in order, so you have to come out of rebellion by repenting 
and asking God to forgive you, and then he'll restore you, and then we can continue on the journey that God has for you. Say amen. But you want to stay away from rebellion. Say amen to that. Now, as we move forward in these days, say amen to that, things are going to get a little tighter, especially when you go to the grocery store and when you're trying to buy food and different things like that. It's going to be available. It's going to be available, but in limited quantities, unaccustomed like we are used to having it. Say amen to that. Say amen to that. So don't be alarmed because God has promised to take care of you. Say amen to that. Now, I don't know how he's going to get it to you, but he's going to get it to you based on your need. Because all your needs are met according to his riches and glory. Say amen to that. So when people come out, oh, we ain't going to have no water. Remember, I told, my, I told the class this morning, right? Don't be so upset if you can't find bottled water. That's right. right? Drink what we drank before bottled water came. <laughs> Tap water. <laughs> Tap water. If, you're, if your faucet in the house don't work, go out and get the water hose and drink some water. <laughs> Say amen to that. It's still what That was all we had before Zephyr Hills and uh, all this Aquafina and all this other stuff. So, you know, we're, we're actually paying for water when you got an, an endless supply right there in your kitchen, in the sink, in the bathroom. Back in the old days, in the wintertime, when our pipes used to freeze, we always knew it was going to happen. So my grandma would fill the bathtub. She filled the bathtub and all the sinks with water. Say amen to that. So when the pipes would freeze, say amen to that. And we said she'd just go in the bathtub and dip out some water. If we had the base, she'd dip out some water and boil it on the stove. And we kept it moving. Say amen to that. See, because back then, houses weren't built on the ground. They were built above ground, so the pipes were free. And they'd take a, a frozen pipe three or four days to thaw out. So they fill the tub, we fill buckets, we fill with tap water. And it was all good. Say amen to that. But God's going to take care of us through this same time. So because he's going to take care of us, God wants us to demonstrate his light toward those who don't understand that and who don't know that. Can you say amen to that? So with that, we're going to look at in the times that we are in right now, we, you and I need to understand that the grace of God is still sufficient. The grace of God. Say grace of God. Say grace of God. The grace of God is still all you need. That's all you need. The grace of God is his favor. God's favor does not stop being on you. God's favor does not stop being, dem does not stop being demonstrated towards you because of the times. That's a promise that you have and from the word of God. God doesn't work with you because of time. He works with you because you're his. You belong to him. You are his responsibility. It is his job to make sure that you are taken care of. So even in this time when it seems like the enemy is hitting us left and right, say amen to that. You need to understand, I need to understand that the grace of God is all I need in the time that I'm living in. Glory be to God. So with that, if you would open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we'll use, a, again, a very familiar passage of Scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Here's the scenario. <clears throat> Paul, who is now the Apostle Paul, who was converted back in the book of Acts from being just Paul uh, to, from Saul to Paul. <laughs> he was a persecutor of the church. He was a, a Roman citizen. He was of a tribe of Benjamin. He spoke seven different languages, and he was, a, he was astute, very smart, very intelligent concerning the law. And so his persecution of the church was based solely on the law, and he felt in himself that he was doing God a big-time favor or a big-time justice until he, he met the presence of Christ on the road to Damascus. And when he met Christ on the, on the road to Damascus, he had a life-changing encounter with him. The encounter was so powerful that the Bible says a light shined from heaven and knocked him off his horse. That's again, in other words, in other words, Paul had never run into anyone or anything that could put him on his back. Say amen to that. And after meeting Christ, his whole persona, his whole perspective of life changed because in Acts chapter 9, he says, Lord, in answer to the light that he heard the voice of Christ, he said, Lord, what would you have me to do? He instantaneously surrendered his life to Christ. Well, you know, the story as the story goes is he was blinded by that light. And as he was blinded, he was blinded for three long days. And, he, and, and, and God, the men that were with him, took him to a city 
to the city where he was put in this place, and there he stayed for three days. And God, through the Holy Spirit, spoke to Ananias and told Ananias that he had had Paul had a dream, and he saw you coming to lay hands on him that he received his sight. Ananias says, listen. I would really like to go, but this guy does this. And, and the Spirit of God says, no, I have saved him to be a vessel for me among the Gentiles. In other words, in other words the virus he carried has been put out in his life. Now he's ready to receive the injection of the Holy Ghost that you're going to give him when you lay hands on him and pray for him to receive his sight. Well, Ananias did it, and Paul, the, light, the, the, the scales fell from his eyes. He began to see, and from that time on, he was sold out to the work that God has called him out to do. He began to preach. Once he learned what he was supposed to do from other disciples, once he spent some time with them, he began this journey of preaching. And through him, God systematically established more churches through his evangelistic exports than any other person in the Bible. Other than Jesus, Paul is the main character. He wrote more books of the Bible than anyone else concerned. He gives us a complete man, plan of how to evangelize, how to grow a church from scratch, how to train preachers, how to train pastors, how to train disciples. He gives us a complete twandry of books in the Bible, how to do it. Well, this same guy, this same guy that had all of that revelation, this same guy that understood all of that, still came under attack by the enemy. And he even had to understand that the grace of God is all you need. So in this particular text, as he's uh, pursuing his, his uh, call that God has put on him, and as he is going about his duties, he noticed that, Paul noticed that as he would go places, that things would happen. Many, many uh, theologians say that he had a sickness. Many of them say he had uh, some kind of eye thing. Many of them said he was attacked by the enemy. Uh, I kind of say that, I don't know about the sickness thing, but I do know everywhere he went, he was attacked by the enemy. See, but whether he had a sickness or whether he was attacked by the enemy, they both are considered infirmities. And the reason they're both considered infirm is because within himself, he is so weak and fragile just like us, he has no ability to protect himself. So, so why does God send me on a mission that's perilous, that's filled with all kind of ups and downs and ins and outs. God, why you just can't have me do something that just work out 100%? Why I got to deal with crazy people? Why I got to deal with hostile people? Why you just can't just, just snap your finger, save everybody I got to talk to, deliver everybody I got to come in contact with? Why don't you just do that? Because God says you need to know that my grace <laughs> is sufficient. Instead of you crying to me about what they're doing uh -huh. and crying to me about what they're saying and crying to me about how they're acting and, and how they're looking at you and, and how they're talking about you and how they perceive you, you need to understand one thing. My grace is all you need. You don't need them, but you need my grace. You don't need to worry about them, but you need my grace. So Paul, in turn, he, under, he, he, he notices that everywhere he goes. Now, he, this man, Paul had had revelations. He had, he had been caught up in the spirit where he saw John on the out of Patmos, where he saw where John received his revelation of the book of Revelation. Paul had been endowed with so much that God has given him that it would be very easy for a person to get a swell head concerning what they've seen and what they know. Say amen to that. So now, as we begin this text, about the text, the text is all around where uh, Satan said, Paul says, I had received so much revelation that there was given to me a messenger of Satan to buffet me so that I would not be exalted above measure. Now, it sounds like, it sounds like as if God says, okay, I want to bother him with the devil's stuff so he wouldn't be exalted above measure. I need to, no, no. What the text is actually helping us understand, what Paul is going through is helping us to understand the power of the sufficiency that's inside God's grace. Say me that. Many times in our life, say, there's not a person in here who's not dealing with something. I don't care what scale it is, and to you, to me it may not be anything, but to you, it's like, oh, man, this is to the fifth power, a problem I got here. Why don't you understand it, dude? If you understand what I'm going through, your fifth power problem don't trump my tenth power problem. 
So I ain't really too much worried about what you're going through. But both of us need to understand that the grace of God is all we need. The favor of God is still available. And if the favor of God is still available, then God's still going to take care of me and meet all my needs. Could it be that my frailties as a human being makes it possible for God to do mighty things with me because I am so frail? Because I can't take care of myself. Say, man, you know, if I'm left to myself, there's no telling what I think. Then God, no, there's no telling what I might do. I'm just that stupid if God just left me to myself. Well, y'all talk, y'all don't talk like that. I say, I know, I know I need to depend on Jesus. Say amen to that. I come here one day and man hurt all y'all. Well, do the best you can. Now, (laughs) say amen to that. And that's it, that's it, that's it, that's what all of us deal with. Say amen to that. But, but instead of occupying our time concerning about the attacks that Satan loses on us, we need to focus more on the sufficiency of God's grace that is given toward us. Now, what is, what is God trying to do? He's trying to give me, I don't need you to concentrate on what the enemy is doing. I've taken care of him. I need you to concentrate on what I'm doing now with you and what I'm doing now through you and what I'm going to do for you. So let's focus on that. Let's keep the main thing the main thing. And let's not get sidetracked with all this other stuff. Can you say amen? So in verse number 9 of the text, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 9, he says, he said, it, Paul says, this thing that was happening to me, I prayed to the Lord three times. We know from reading about Paul from Acts all the way until this time, Paul had no problem getting an answer from God when he prayed. We saw him cast out a demon and a lady. We saw him, we saw him poison and he didn't die. We, we saw him shipwreck and he made it the way he was going on broken pieces. We saw Paul come through many, many of trials and tribulation and, and, and virtually came through them unscathed. Didn't even get a scratch on him. So he said, well, this particular thing, he says, this messenger of Satan was sent to buffet him. Say buffet. You ever feel sometimes like you're getting slapped and can't do anything about it? That's what buffet is. That's what buffet is. It's, it's the idea of slapping somebody. You know, when you, you know, the worst thing you could do to a person is slap them with an open hand. It's embarrassing, it hurts, and it's shocking. Matter of fact, if you do that to somebody, you best be on your move because something's about to happen. Say me to that. You don't want slapping, but it, it, it's aggravating more than anything else because it stings really, really bad. They could be done slap you, and 30 minutes later, it's still stinging. And if you're a fair-complected person, that handprint is left on your face. So now you got a mark that indicates you've been slapped. And somebody sees you getting slapped, they want to know what you're going to do. So Paul says, there was given to me this minister of Satan or this angel of Satan to buffet me. Now, teaching point. Everyone knows that Satan is a spirit. We also know that the demonic angels that are attached to him are spirit beings too. So how did this demon slap Paul in the face? What would happen is, and let me give you both instances. It could have been that this demon presence showed up in his body as a sickness, which would be like a slap in the face. Or it could have been the people that he went to preach to would always get in an uproar and run him out of town. That would be a slap in the face. Either way, it's an infirmity. Either way, it's something that Paul couldn't do anything with because he was weak, right, and didn't have the equipment to deal with it. So what Paul needs to learn, like we need to learn, is even though this virus is spreading, even though the grace of God is still all we need Mm -hmm. to face it or to deal with it and to overcome it. Can you say amen to that? So so, so Paul says, he says, I prayed to God, how many times? Three times. I prayed to him three times. And I didn't pray about the wind. I didn't pray about the ain't. I prayed about him getting this thing off of me. Three times I did, and he said, so since God prayed, he prayed three times, this answer that we get in verse 9 is the same answer he got all three times. It's not like he prayed three times and then got the answer. He got the, the same answer, excuse me, all three times. And the answer is, he's, and God said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is all you need. I'm not going to stop. If there's a sickness, I'm not going to fix that. I'm going to do something like that. If, if, they're, if they're bothering you, I'm not going to talk. Why? Because inside my favor, if, if it is a sickness, there's healing available. Inside my favor, there's a deliverance available. Inside the favor that I have for you, that's all those things that you need. So you need to worry about what he's doing, what the devil is doing. You need to worry about what comes over your body because there's a built-in program in my favor to take care of you and to provide for you. 
Say me that. So what is he saying? What is he saying? I'm telling you that you need to invoke my favor over your life mm -hmm. and stop praying to me about what the devil's doing. Right, 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 right. Okay. Exercise my favor that I've given you. Yeah. I wish I had a witness. Say me to that. In other words, I need to start telling my circumstances what God says. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Then his favor becomes active in my life. So he says, my grace is sufficient for due because why this? He says, Paul, I know you're vulnerable. Just like I know every other believer I call is vulnerable. Matter of fact, I made all y'all very vulnerable. Y'all are very vulnerable. You can't protect yourself from a germ or not anything. I don't care how much education you get, you are unable to protect yourself from certain things. Right. Say amen to that. So he says, I, I need you to understand that my strength is made perfect in weakness. In other words, he says, my power does not do well inside of people who don't think they need me. <laughs> yeah, if you think you got it all together and you think you all that, you're prideful and you don't need me. So since you don't need me, my power won't work for you. The spirit that I place in you, he will come to your assistance when you have exhausted you. Can you say amen to that? See now, watch this. What does the world teach us? Be your own woman. Be your own man. You don't need them. You don't need this. Well, if you start thinking like that, you start thinking in terms of, well, I don't need God because I don't need you. I don't have to work with you because I don't, I don't have to work with God because I don't have to work with you. You begin to systematically believe that you are invincible and nothing can get to you. That's when you put a bullseye on your back. Can you say amen to that? Is anybody all right in here? But we want to be encouraged to understand that the strength that God, the power of the Holy Spirit comes to our assistance when we have done the will of God according to the word of God and we lack the ability to go any further. Then comes the power of God. Amen. Then comes the strength of God. Amen. Then comes the delivering power of God. Then comes the revelation that God had. Then it comes. Why? Because I've done what you said, God, and it ain't come to pass. Now you need to kick it in a notch. So I can get done what you called me to do. Paul, he says to Paul, my strength, strength, it becomes a completed, com makes perfect or becomes complete. He says, when you get to a point where you can't deal with what's going on, my power merges with you. All right. I ain't got no witnesses in here. Somebody is waiting on here that to hear that this morning. You have gone as far as you can go. <laughs> You have, you, it, it, it virtually appears like, God, I don't know where else to go. I've been here. I've been there. You need to understand, you're just about to get a merging of the power of God. In, say amen to that. Now, when that merging comes, when that merging comes, he's going to reveal to you what you need to do and how you need to do it, and he's going to empower you to do it. Can you say amen to that? So he says, my strength or my power is made perfect or it's complete in you when you can't get up and you need some help and there's nobody else around. That's when he comes. That's when he is at his best. That's when my power is made perfect in your weakness. You like the ability to do it. You like understanding why it's happening. You like the ability to carry on. He said, look out. Help is on the way. All right. Hallelujah. Help is on the way. He says, my strength is made perfect in what? Not just your weakness, in weakness, period. And then Paul says, oh, what a revelation. See, that's what, that's what God wants us to understand in this times we're going in, right? We're, we're, we're at an impasse. Say impasse. We are shut down because of something we can't see, we can't touch. We can't feel it. And I can look at you and you can look at me and we don't even know if one of us got this thing or not. Right. That's right. Because when it shows up, we almost got to go to some kind of ICU chamber. So we feel like we don't even know. We breathing on each other in here. We don't even know. Say amen to that. We don't know what we got. We don't know what we came. You may have come from some kind of infestation. You don't even know you got it. I am unequipped to deal with that because I, I don't have the ability to know what. Now they tell me, don't come getting tested just because you think you might have it. Don't show up here. 
We we got to we got to test folk who really got. In other words, they're saying, "Don't come to us unless you when you hold your breath for ten seconds and it hurts so bad you can't stand up. Then we want to see you. Well, heck, you have to drive me to you then because I can't walk <laughs> and I can't drive. <laughs> but but um, the the country is at an impasse yeah. on how to handle it. Right. We don't know what to do. So the best thing they're telling people, wait till you get it and almost dead, then come have the test. And the test takes two or three days. You don't care how fast they do it, it still takes, so you know. But if you show the symptoms, at least we know what we're looking for. Because there are people saying, I just want to get tested for the sake of getting tested. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because you may test clean today and have it tomorrow. Don't do that. So America and all the other countries are dealing with things to the best. They need us. Say us. us. They need us to release the spirit of God to show them how to find a cure for this thing. Say amen to that. Or a vaccine or however God's going to do it. Say amen to that. God is waiting on the body of Christ to declare victory over this thing in the name of Jesus and declare that by the power of the Holy Spirit, them doctors who don't even know Jesus are going to find a vaccine that's going to take care of this. Now. So he, so Paul says, man, what a revelation. Say what a revelation. But God says, I'm not going to answer your prayer under, but to say this. My grace is sufficient. Many times when God answers a prayer, you have to really be in line with him to understand why he answers like he answers. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. Paul, I would hit, no, you just need to know one thing. My grace is sufficient. And out of that answer to his prayer, Paul gets a revelation. He gets a revelation, which all of us, after we pray to God, once we get an answer, it should bring with it a revelation about what God wants us to do. The Paul says, then, with this revelation, this is what I understand. He says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. What is he saying, Paul? That sounds crazy. He ain't crazy. Paul says, no, no, I ain't crazy. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to praise God in the midst of my weaknesses. Why? Wow. I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to give him honor. I'm saying, God, I'm thinking I'm weak. I'm thinking that I, I think that I need you to help me. I think that I need you to guide me. I think that I need you to talk to me. I think that I need for you to put your, to, to love me. I think that I need for you to come for me. Why? Because I can't do it myself. I'm, too, I'm so weak, I don't even know how to get up unless you tell me to get up. I don't even know when to lay down unless you tell me to lay down. I am just that fragile. I am just that fragile. There are things I need to take care of. I'm looking at them, and I don't even know what to do. Help me. There are things I need to avoid. Help me. I need your help. I need your constant. Paul says, so I'm going to praise you. I'm going to acknowledge you in all my weaknesses because why? Apparently, you built me like this. Apparently, you built me like this. And that's why I tell our, 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 my teaching style is designed to, to keep us away from things that will cause us devastation because we are so vulnerable. You can't afford to have too many unsolicited relationships in your life. You're too vulnerable. And all you're doing is taking pain from one to the other, one to the other, one to the other. You're too vulnerable. You can't go through heartache after heartache and heartbreak after heartbreak and depression and disappointment of compounding. You'll become a, a wreck. You're not designed for that. You're not built for that. You can't handle that. And that's why God says stay away from it. Because these things will damage you. And if they damage you, they damage your relationship with me. So Paul says, I have learned then since I'm not, no matter, Paul says I've learned, uh, I, I've gladly therefore rejoiced. I've, in other words, I've learned that I, I do speak seven languages, but there's a language God's talk I don't know. I do, I do come from a well-to-do family, but the family of God is wealthier than that. I do know that I can do this, I can do that, but I choose to put down my I do for his help me. Can you say amen to that? So he says in the text, he says, the most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my weaknesses. Why? That the power of Christ may do what? I don't know about you, but I want, I want the power of God to rest on me 24-7. 365 days a year. I need the power of God all the time on me. I need the spirit of God to be active in me and on me all the time. Say amen to that. Because why? I, I, I don't know from one day to the next what's going to happen unless he tell me. So I need him to be a constant companion with me. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, what's a good word? I'm going to embrace my frailness. I'm going to embrace it, but I'm not going to let it be a handicap to me. I'm going to embrace it because I understand by embracing it, I also release the power of God to rest on me. I know that I can't do everything I need to do. I know that I can't go everywhere I need to go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to embrace my weaknesses, and I'm going to follow the plan that God has for me. Then I'm going to say, okay, I've done all I can do. Where's my help? I'm right here. Can you say amen to that? You see? So that's what we need to know as we process through this, because we're going to go through it. We're going to go through it. Say amen to that. We're going to go through it because we're part of the world. But now it's how we go through it that's going to help the world identify who we really serve. Say amen to that. Now, in the New Living Translation, verse number nine, it reads like this. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast or brag about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Glory be to God. So we understand that verse, verse number 10 says, verse number 10 says, last verse. <coughs> now he says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. Semicolon. For when I'm weak, comma, then I'm strong. Now I'm going to do a little theological no-no. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, which we'll do last. All right? Pleasure in infirmities, we'll do last. He says, I'm also going to take pleasure in reproaches. When things come against me or people come against me. All right. In necessities, when there are things that I like. Mm -hmm. In persecution, when things follow me trying to stop me from doing what you want me to do. Or just follow me trying to aggravate me. Mm -hmm. In distresses, when there seems to be like, like we are now. Distresses, things are happening, things are going on, trying to cause me to worry. Mm -hmm. For Christ's sake. First of all, I need to understand these things I'm going through is because I am following Jesus. Right. Say me to that. That's the first thing I need to understand. I need to understand I'm, these things are for, I'm, I'm enduring these things or I'm going through this thing for Christ's sake because Christ said, if they hate you, they hated me first. If they persecuted you, they persecuted me first. Everything that's done to you is done to me first and it's being done to you because you have decided to follow me. That's why Christ says, take up your cross. If any man come after me, the first thing you got to do, you got to take up your cross, right. uh, uh, deny yourself, take up your cross, and then do what? Follow me. Say amen. So when you're following Christ, say amen to that. This does not immune me from the suffering that goes on in the world. Say amen to that. And none. But it gives me, the, uh, I have the ability through the favor of God to overcome in every circumstance. And Jesus said, in this world you will have what? Tribulation, but be of good cheer, for he has what? So I can expect, say expect. That's the difference between now I can expect, even if I get this virus, I expect to be healed. Amen. Say amen to that. Even if it comes on me or any member of my family, I expect for them to be healed because I know the formula for getting healed. Amen. Lay hands on the sick and pray the prayer of faith and they will recover. Amen. I ain't got no witnesses in here. Say amen to that. Now, so, but in the text though, in the text he says, for when I am weak, then I am strong. We've already proven that we're frail. Say frail. frail. I'm frail. You're frail. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with acknowledging that. I'm frail. Say amen to that. But at the same time, I'm, I'm weak in one sense, but then in another sense, I'm strong. It sounds like he's splitting verbs or adjectives or something like that. But he's not. He says, the more I acknowledge my frailties, the more I'm strengthened by the power of God in me. In other words, what he's saying See, when, when I'm weak, I need assistance. Say amen to that. And the more I acknowledge that I need the assistance of the Holy Ghost in my life. Say amen to that. That means the more things come against me that I can handle, the more things come against me that cause me grief, the more things that come against me cause my problem. I acknowledge I can't fix them. I acknowledge I can't handle them. Then the power of God comes over me and tells me what to do in the midst of them so I can handle them. 
So I will be victorious over them in the midst of everything. Say amen to that. Amen. Glory be to God. So Paul said, but then he says, he says, for when I am weak, then I, then am I strong. So Paul said, well, then that makes sense. He said, I'm never then going to not deny that I can't handle what I need to handle. Say amen to that. I'm always going to throw it. I'm always going to take every care I have and cast it on God. Well, since he want to handle them, I'm going to let him handle them. It don't make sense for me to have to handle something that he told me I don't need to handle. Amen. Say amen to that. So I'm going to let him handle it. But the, the first part of the text is the most powerful part of the text. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. The word pleasure is the key word in the text. I take pleasure. It sounds like I just like being weak. Now, that would be too generic. And it would sound kind of crazy. Nobody's going to sit around and, and rejoice at having a problem. No. Say me to that. Amen. Even though I know what's available to me, I'm not going to sit around, oh, thank you that my child died. Oh, thank you that this virus has infected the whole country. No. But the idea of the word pleasure in the text, it doesn't mean I'm sad. It means, though, I am willing to go through all these processes because I know when I go through all these processes, the power of your spirit merges with me. And when he merges with me, even though the part of me is weak, I'm also strong also. So you see me as weak, but you just don't understand the kind of power that I have. Oh, God have mercy. So now, what, let, me, let, me, let me find an example. Jesus, as he comes up out of the River Jordan, the Bible says after John baptized him. Right. Now, he didn't baptize Jesus because he had the sin. He baptized him so it would identify with Scripture. Say amen to that. Once he comes up out of the River Jordan, the Bible says the heavens open up mm -hmm. uh -huh. and the Spirit of God descended like enough. Nobody could see it. Mm -hmm. This is the rightest interpretation given to him by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God descended on him as a dove, like a dove zeroing in and lighting on a person. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. And then there was a voice from heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And everybody look on. Who said that? Who said that? The Bible then instructs us that once that happened to Jesus. Now, Jesus was a flesh, blood, and bone man just like us. He was weak. He had to be made fragile in order for him to be who God needed him to be to pay the penalty for sin. He was made fragile just like us. Now, once that happens, uh, the Bible says that the Spirit of God led him into the wilderness. Right. Now, Jesus is no longer running his own life. It's led by the Spirit of God. What are we going to do? Let's go in the wilderness and pray. We're going to stay out there and pray, and you're gonna, I'm going to have you to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. And afterward, the week party, you're going to be really, really hungry. But then I'm going to be on you, and you're going to be really, really strong. See the merging? You see the merging? Do you, I, I need you to see the merging. He said, when you get really, really hungry, I'm going to merge with you. And even though you ain't got a sandwich, you're going to not need it because I'm going to merge with you. And I'm going to give you something that will not only fill you one way, but fill you the other way. I wish I had a witness. Now, watch the text. So what you have to learn from this. Why is that important, Pastor, with what you're talking about? If you're going to understand the favor of God is sufficient, you got to be able to operate according to the direction of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to tell you something real bold right now. Don't pull a fast unless he tells you to do it. Because if you pull a fast on your own say-so, you don't have the power to resist what you're fasting. Don't pull a fast. And then if you're going to fast, if he told you to fast, that's between you and him, not you and your friend. And if you're going to fast, I don't want to see you walk around here talking about you hungry, or you this, or you that, or you this, or you that. Now you all you're trying to do is show off. If God told you to fast and he told you not to eat for three days, then don't you eat. But still, wash your face, brush your teeth, and don't be looking like you're hungry. I'm trying to help somebody. We always try to pull these fast because it makes us look spiritual in the eyes of other people. You don't want to look spiritual. You want to be spiritual. So if God, if the Spirit of God instructs you to fast, that means he's going to give you the power to resist what you're fasting. And if he gives you the power to resist what you're fasting, you're not just fasting to tell somebody. You're fasting to do something. 
So don't pull it. Don't try to pull it. Just to sound good. Oh, well, me and my girlfriend's fasting. Well, that's just a diet you done blew again. But anyway, so Jesus then led by the Spirit of I wish I say amen to that. You take your lead from scriptures in the times we're living in. The Spirit of God is going to instruct you on what to do and how to do every step of the way. Every step of the way. And I'm telling you, this travel thing and all of this, you need to worry about it. If God wants you to go somewhere, somebody going to open a plane and a seat for you to go somewhere, which means a whole lot of people going to get to fly. But you're going to get to go somewhere because that's what God has for you to do. I ain't got no wisdom. He went quiet on me. went quiet on me. So anyway, so Jesus then, as he now, so he approaches. The Bible says after 40 days, he was hungry. That was a part of him. The weak part of him or the physical part of him was hungry. Try fasting 40 days and 40 nights and see what you come up with. He was hungry, but at the same time, he was powerful. He was hungry and powerful at the same time. But yet it wasn't time for him to eat anything. It was time for him to do battle. Say amen to that. So now at this moment in time, at this moment in time when he is at his weakest, I think there's a medical thing for fasting 40 days and 40 nights. There's a medical thing for it. I ain't going to that. But anyway, the enemy, begin, the enemy comes to him now in this weakened state with the idea of seducing him to turn his back on God. To seduce him. And he comes with his three favors, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. If you be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Wow. I could use my faith. He could have. No, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Okay, you can't use that anymore. Well, if you, if you, if you bow down to me, I give you all these kingdoms. Well, uh, uh, what it says, I will not bow down to you. It's the Lord God I only serve. Yep, you can give it that one. Then he said, okay, uh, if you throw yourself off there, he has given his angels charge. I will not tempt the Lord thy God. Everything he came at him with had to do with what Jesus could see, what he could feel, and what he wanted. And he denied all of it, right? Because he was strong enough under the anointing of the Holy Spirit to say no to everything Satan had. And that's what you want. That's what you want. That's what Paul Mitt says when I'm weak. I'm so weak. But when I, when I have the Spirit of God working on me and in me, I am able to resist the seduction of the devil and say no to him but continue to stay faithful and yes to God. That's what all this is about right now. That's all it is about right now. Say amen to that. I can say yes. That's that merge. You see the merging? So Jesus had the spirit of God merged within him. And even though he was hungry, and then the Bible says, at the last thing, Jesus said, you know what? I am tired of this. Get thee behind me, Satan. Why you didn't say that the first time? Because I wanted to teach y'all how to deal with him. How to say no and mean it. But you need some backup to your no. Say amen to that. So he says, now get thee behind me, Satan. And then the minute that happened, the Bible says, then angels came and ministered to him. That's, the, that's again, that's God. What did they bring him? Food, water. They ministered to him. They came to take care of what he denied so he could do battle for God. Amen. Say amen to that. Ooh, man. Say amen to that. God, say, I, God has to. Supply what I need in the midst of what I'm going through. He has to. Why? Because he promised he would. Say amen to that. He promised he would. So Paul didn't, Paul, as we go back to the text and as I begin to close, Paul says, therefore, in the New Living Translation, therefore, that's why I am willing or I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in insults and in hardships and in persecutions and trouble that I suffer for Christ. Paul said, I don't take it personal. I understand. That's what many, but even in the times we're going in, like this, this thing is not only affecting non-believers, it's affecting believers. But watch this, watch this. Non-believers are looking for a mechanism or a way to handle this. Yes. Right. 
They are looking for a mechanism or a way how to deal with it. You know, people are worried about what they're going to do with their children. They're worried about, I, I, you know, parents, when they close these schools, people, oh, like, what am I going to do? My job still requires that I come to work. What am I going to do? How am I going to handle that? Then uh, how, how am I going to feed them? Because that, that breakfast and lunch helped my children. I didn't have to get up and cook in the morning. I still got to go to work. How am I going to make that work? Then if I go to work, who's going to get them to the school that's offering the free lunch? How's this going to happen? Now they're saying they got, to, they got to do this online education thing. Well, I don't get off to like 10. My, my shift is 12 to midnight or my shift is 4 to 12. How am I going to do all of that? It's overwhelming to them. And they're looking for an avenue. They're looking for some way to navigate all of this and keep their sanity at the same time. You and I become the voice of reason. You and I become the voice of reason in this chaotic society that we're living in now. You and I become the visible, tangible proof that God will direct you through these turbulent times. He'll give you the ability to handle everything you need to handle. Say amen to that. And that is why if you want to see these things stop and these things not come to pass, then we need to be taking authority over this virus. And we need to be canceling this assignment on mankind in the name of Jesus so we can get our lives back to some kind of normalcy. I wish I had a witness. So Paul says, I am still willing, I'm willing to go through insults, hardships, disappointment, whatever they may be, because that's part of what I have to deal with as a child of God. I'm willing. I'm willing to take it. I'm willing to deal with it. I'm willing to suffer the abuse of it because it's a part of what I need to do for Christ's sake. I'm not going to complain about it. I'm not going to argue anybody about it. I'm not going to rebel against it. I'm going to take it and go through with it because I know it's part of what I need to deal with as a child of God. But I want you to understand this. The weaker I am, the stronger I am. So if, if, my, if my ability to deal with what I go with goes down to minus zero on the negative side, that means on my strong side, I got 100 plus to the power of zero on the positive side that's going to cover all of me and merge, say merge. Say, Holy Spirit, I call on you now. Merge with me as I, as I willingly process through what I'm going through, what I'm dealing with, what my family is dealing with. I accept it graciously because it's part of what I deal with as your child. And I give you glory. I give you praise. I give you thanks that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, that the greater one is in me, and I am more than a conqueror because you died on the cross and rose again the third day. So in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you so much. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. So, <clears throat> maintain your faith. And understand that the grace of God is all we need. The favor of God. Say the favor of God. Never allow what you're going through to make you even remotely think that the favor of God is not active in your life. Say amen to that. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, I declare for these in this room today, by the power of the word and by the power of the Holy Spirit and in Jesus' name, I take authority over any doors that are closed that should be open, any doors that are open that they be closed. In the name of Jesus, I declare that no one's livelihood will be blocked by this virus, that no one's livelihood will be stalled or cut off by this virus in the name of Jesus, that by your word and by your power, you have avenues that you're going to open up to continue to give us the ability to do what you've called us to do and what you've empowered us to do for your kingdom and for your glory. So God, we submit ourselves to you right now. We submit to your word. We submit to you in prayer. We submit to you in the practicing of your word and how we live our lives that we declare that we are the lights of the world, that we are a city that is set on a hill and we cannot be hid. But you put us on a mantle that we can give light to all that are in the house to show them the way to Jesus and to show them to the way of salvation for his glory. So we thank you today. 
Thank you all, first of all, that we're your children. Thank you that you've equipped us and empowered, empowered us for such a time as this. And we, we are so grateful that we, according to the authority given us, can call things as not as though they are. In Jesus' name, and the people of God that agree, said amen. Amen again. One more time, say amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Amen. Give them on now. <clears throat> For all of you, this is what, you, this is what we need to do. Each, each one of you controls your own house. Say amen to that. You control your own house. Say amen to that. And just like God told Israel on the night that they were about to leave Egypt, and he told them that the deaf angel was coming, he told them to do one thing, to a couple of things. He said, first, kill a lamb of the Passover and take the blood and put it on the lintel and the side post of each dwelling. He says, so when that deaf angel comes through, he will see the blood. And when he sees the blood, he will pass over your house, meaning, meaning the blood is the barrier between the death angel or this plague that, that, that was called the plague of death. He says, now, so this is, this is it. We, what I believe we ought to do is reenact that. You don't kill an animal. Don't, don't, don't do that. The animal, the lamb has already been slain. When you, because of the authority Jesus has given you, say Jesus, he's given you authority. Luke 10, 19 says he's given you authority to tread on scorpions and serpents and all the works of power of the enemy and nothing of his by any means shall harm you. Jesus has given you authority. So the devil is already defeated. Say amen to that. So now, so when you go, you want to make your house and your dwelling uh, foolproof. Say amen to that. So you want to go through and you want to, in the name of Jesus, plead his blood through your entire dwelling. By faith, plead his blood. As you enter into your house, you can, you can, I don't know, you can stand in the center, stand somewhere, plead the blood, and send forth that blood in Jesus' name to every crevice, every crack in your dwelling. Say amen to your dwelling. And as it, as it covers, it will sanctify and it will protect you. Say amen to that. While it's doing that, then you say, in Jesus' name, I send forth every germ and every virus out of this dwelling in the name of Jesus. Then turn and plead the blood over yourself. I plead the blood of Christ over me to protect me, to sanctify me in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Christ in me. And as that blood goes through me and ends me, it is filtering out every undesirable virus, every undesirable germ. And I declare, because of the Spirit of God in me, my body is holy ground. And so anything that enters my body without the permission of the Holy Ghost is trespassing. And you die. And you die. And you die. You don't leave. You die. In the name of Jesus. Say amen to that. And once you do that, by, you do it by faith. You do it by faith. You do it by faith alone. Say amen to that. You do it by faith. And then when you drive your car, do it over your car. When you're outside doing it, when you go in the grocery store, do it in the grocery store. You just want to make sure that you acknowledge your frailty or our inability to watch over ourselves. And we need the power of the Holy Spirit to protect us and watch over us. Can you say amen to that? So glory be to God. Do that, and I, guarantee, I do believe that you're going to be just fine in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> I'll see you back here Wednesday night when we're going to get encouraged again. Say amen to that. Now, am I still on the air? All right, we're going out. So I'm going to, we're going to be here Wednesday night. We're going to do something a little different. I want, uh, instead of the children over there, everybody's going to come in here. Everybody's going to come in here. So we need some encouragement. Say amen. We're going to need some encouragement. We're going to work out the Easter peace. Uh, the resurrection piece as we go along. We're going to do something, but we're not going to not recognize the, re re the resurrection. We are not not going to recognize the resurrection in some way, shape, or form. Say amen to that. So, so get it here. We'll be here Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for our Wednesday night uh, encouragement time, and we'll be here next Sunday doing the same exact thing until this plague is lifted off the earth. We're going to get encouragement from the Word, and we're going to pray. So you out there watching, I'm going to enter into a time of prayer right now. Please pray with us as we pray. You pray out there as we go. Father, we come now into your most marvelous presence. And we want to thank you, first of all, for the encouragement that we received today in your word. We understand now that we're not fighting the devil. We're not fighting the virus. We're fighting the fight of faith. And it's our responsibility to keep our faith strong. So in Jesus' name, we will not let go of our faith. 
we will stand firm in the power of your word and the anointing of the Holy Spirit during this time that we are traveling through now. And we thank you now, according to your word again, you encourage us, that your grace is sufficient. We call on the Holy Spirit now to merge with us and give us the power and the anointing we need to go through whatever we are going through and without being touched and without being scathed and without being hurt in the name of Jesus. And we thank you now that as we come out of this, our testimony will be that the God that we serve is more than able to take care of us. So now God, and I lift up now all those frontline individuals, all those medical workers, the emergency people who are dealing with this thing on it. I plead the blood of Christ over each one of them, wherever they may be and whatever they may be doing. I declare in Jesus name that the blood of Christ protects them from the virus. I declare that the blood of Christ sanctifies them from the virus. It purifies them as they render service to those who need it in the name of Jesus. I pray now for believers who are bold enough to stand in their faith and speak forth the word of God to folks who are in crisis, to folks who are in turmoil, in the name of Jesus. I think that these believers now are not only speaking their faith, but they're demonstrating their faith by praying for folk and giving them the great and giving them what they need to know to accept Christ as Savior. God, we declare in Jesus' name that this virus, as it comes through, it's going to leave a trail of people who love you, who have accepted you, who believe you. It's going to leave behind a body of believers who are more powerful than ever who are joined together in union with you and your spirit who are ready to see the manifestation of your glory in the earth and we thank you for that I pray for everyone watching today wherever they may be I take authority over fear and anxiety now in the name of Jesus and I release in this room and over the airways the peace of Christ that passes all understanding I command peace to guard their hearts Guard their minds in the name of Jesus, we declare it today. And Father, I thank you now that as we continue through, we call for an end of the suffering in Jesus' name. I agree with my, my fellow brothers on the conference call Friday. We expect this thing to be over by the end of March in the name of Jesus. You said, you said whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth will be, I, we in Jesus' name, loose the cure for this covert 19 in the name of Jesus. And we declare it ends the end of March in Jesus' name. And as for a witness, and as for a witness, we will see the revelation of your power, God, over the entire world like never before in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you today. We pray, I pray for each individual families here that they would, the leaders of those families by the authority given them would take charge of that. Pray over them, pray for them, anoint them with the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Now God, I release now upon all of us the peace of Christ that passes all understanding. Guard our hearts. Guard our minds. Strengthen us by your spirit now, God. Empower us again by your spirit. That as we acknowledge our inability to take care of ourselves, your spirit merges with us and gives us the ability to take care of that which is so weak and frail. So we give you thanks now and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, and the people of God that agree said amen. Amen again. One more time. So, man, come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, to our internet audience, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that these messages are, are encouraging you as we process through this. Uh, and as we, uh, as God leads us and guides us, direct us to it. Again, like I said, we'll be here Wednesday night. So if wherever you are in the city or locally, if you can find your way here, make your way here because we'll be encouraging each of us in the word. We'll also be here next Sunday doing the same thing, encouraging and praying as God processes us through this time of devastation in our country. He is still Lord. God, he is still Lord and he still understands. He still knows exactly what is going on on so be strengthened in that be encouraged in that make your stand in christ 
and his, his ability to sustain you and I in the times. So as we leave it today, remember Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God bless you. God keep you. We'll see you at the next broadcast. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap. Uh,